Good afternoon. I want to make sure I'm plugged in properly. I had a sudden suspicion I didn't. Okay. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, my name is Barry Selby, and I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance and love life and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And this is my daily broadcast. Um, initially on Facebook Live, then it'll be rebroadcast on YouTube. And I do this talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is more thematic rather than specific to any particular gender. This today's topic um, is number, by the way, this is number 371. Three, yeah, 371 in an ongoing series of daily talks. So it's over a year's worth now. Because there's lots to talk about when it comes to relationships. <laughs> um, and today's topic is basically that relationship is not a destination. It's a departure point. And I've talked in a tangential way about this before in different areas. But I want to talk about it today because for a lot of people, it seems to be that being in a relationship is the goal. Or relationship that leads to marriage is the goal. Or being married is the goal. It's like these, I mean, I call them milestones. But truth be told, it feels like they're more rest, like resting spot, resting points. Like once you've got that done, you can put your feet up and keep back the rest of your life. And I disagree with that. I'll get to that in a second. Now, I'm mean, going to speak to the masculine and feminine piece for a moment because this is one of those things that comes up. Is the masculine mindset, which is mostly in men, sometimes in women, but mostly in men, is set up as a stair-stepping, goal-oriented mindset to go for the goal. Each successful achievement is another level, keep going up and up and up. And relationship can be like that. It's like another goal achieved, done. Same as getting a new car. Is it another goal achieved, done. Getting a new house, another goal achieved, done getting the right career, getting a promotion. Those are all different goals, which the masculine is driven by. So, thank you, Adam. Well, we're getting into this. Yes, it is a shift in perspective, definitely. And I want to speak to that. So, again, masculine is driven more like goal-oriented. Our, our, I include myself in the conversation because most men are masculine. Even if they're not awakened to it, they are masculine. So, as a masculine heart, a masculine focus, we are goal-oriented, and it's a, it's a stair-stepping system. So, we achieve a goal and we stop. Until we get another goal, then we go forward another, and, keep, and, we, and we keep going. One little sidebar for a second. I just had to download. Um, it was to do with Buzz Aldrin and um, Neil Armstrong. When they went to the moon, this is going to sound, this is going to make sense in a minute. Trust me. I'm just going to sidebar for a second. When they went to the moon, and they walked to the moon, they came back. Buzz Aldrin went on to do many other things, lots of different things. He was working on different projects and he kept going. Neil Armstrong put his feet up. And Neil Armstrong died a lot younger. I mean, Buzz Aldrin, I think, I think he's still around. I mean, he's, he's up there, very much up there. But the reason why I believe Buzz Aldrin outlasted Neil Armstrong is because he had more goals. Because when you go to the moon, that's pretty much the biggest goal you can have. What can you do after that? Well, if you don't think you can go any further, you kind of give up on life. And that's what I believe Neil Armstrong did. So that's to illustrate the point that we men have to have goals ahead of us to keep going. If we don't have any goals... We're aimless or we're dying. We're aimless and dying to that point too. Now, ladies, let's put you in this conversation too. Um, let's just say the business world hasn't treated you well in the sense that not only is it about pay discrepancies and me too and everything else, but the business world has not been designed for you as a feminine woman. It's been designed for you to be like the men. In fact, the business world was designed by men. You know, I mean, like Mad Men is an example of a TV show that sort of exemplified how the business world even it was marketing and, and uh, advertising, was about how men did it, not women did it. And so most women, especially in the corporate environments, because entrepreneurial is different, but in the corporate environments, most women have been forced to conform to the male way of doing things. Competition, goal, rates, goal setting, achieving goals, setting up the next level, beating, out the, the other, beating the other guy out to the job. And so the business world is not designed for the feminine. So a lot of women who are in business have been trained the same way men have, goal orientation. So relationships, as again, as I said, are perceived to be goals. So a destination, a place to get to. And I want to make sure you get the point that relationship is just a starting point. As I said, a departure point in my title. It's challenging to watch relationships crumble once the wedding ring goes on, you know? Actually, on the other hand, but you know, no symbology here. It's, it's, there's something about people who choose to get married 
that don't think beyond the honeymoon. That's saddening for me. It's depressing in a way. Well, not depressing. Is wrong. I won't take it. I'm going to take it personally. But I feel for them that they're not seeing what relationship's really about. Now, I'm talking about relationship in general, not just the marriage part, because that's, that's, that's one of those big like, lines in the sand. You cross that line, it's a new achievement, new level. But in relationship of any sort, well, no, any sort, <laughs> a romantic relationship of a committed sort, let's put it that way. <laughs> I wanna, I'm being non... Um, um, what's the word? A non-sexual base, as in gay or straight, because this is true for both um, parties, is that a relationship with another person, and this is why I want to make this point, a romantic, committed, intimate relationship with another person, those are check marks I hope you have in your list of things for a relationship, by the way, is a great place to start your journey, not end your journey. And again, this is something that I would say most of the people on the planet have no clue about. So if you're watching this, you're probably part of the minority. A very, very small minority of people who realize that relationships are opportunities to grow, to thrive, to explore, to expand, to become more of yourself, to deepen in love, all these different things. But that's the thing. When you're in a relationship with another person, that's what a good time when all your stuff's going to come up. Oh, goody. Yes, this is the thing about soulmates as well. There's been this thing about when you get soulmates, it's going to be heaven, it's going to be perfect. Most people's soulmates, if not all people's soulmates, are there to give you your, they're there to reflect back to you, you to you. So you see yourself as you really are which can bring up all sorts of your issues. Isn't that fun? But every relationship has that possibility. And so soulmate or not, and I'm not a big fan of the term soulmate, I have a different um, perspective on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. That relationship is wired for you to grow because there's another person involved. Surprise, surprise. And I'm talking about monogamous relationships because polyamory just compounds the challenge in a way. Actually, no, it doesn't. It actually weakens that. I'll get to that in a second. I'll include that one as well. So monogamous relationship. Primary, sexually connected, intimate, romantic, loving, growing relationship with the person of your choosing, depending on your preference, puts you in a place where you will be seen by that person frequently, which is an opportunity for you to start seeing how you really act because you'll notice yourself more vividly around another person. It's, a, it's interesting to watch when we're on our own how we may not notice our habits, but when we're around somebody else, we somehow seem to see them more clearly. Oh, goody. But it's a chance to change and evolve and grow. And the possibilities in a relationship, when you are in a committed relationship, connected, intimate, all those different qualities, there's an opportunity, one, to grow and become more of who you really are, two, to support your partner doing the same thing, and third, allowing your partner to support you in that same thing. This is a wonderful relationship. So you can support each other in growing and evolving and becoming more of who you really are. Now, I've got to be careful because I realize there's a, double, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quandary coming up. For some people, they look at relationships and to quote um, um, Billy Joel, there's this mindset that, you know, don't go changing to try and please me. Well, the thing is that some people look at relationships as a chance to get, and this, I've seen this before, I even came, almost came close to one of these, where in this instance, a woman was looking at a man thinking she could make him, him, make him into something. Like she had an agenda. Bad approach, or errant approach, not recommended at all. However, on the other hand, is to see somebody you go, oh, they're really cool. I want them to stay exactly the same. That's a bad move too. So what I'm in, in, inviting you to look at as a third option is to look at relationship as a chance an opportunity, especially if you're somebody who's already on the path of growth, which I've been on for 30 plus years, I ain't stopping when I get into a relationship. And I'm also clear that my partner would be somebody who's already done her work to the degree that she will be at least around the same place I'm playing at. Maybe ahead of me, I don't know. I'm not saying that 30, or 30 plus years makes me very advanced. I'm a slow learner, so <laughs> someone be on their path for a few years and be at the level I'm at. It depends on the path. So I'm not saying that as a chronological match more of a growth level of understanding and evolution that we can grow together. And we, we all overlap each other. And we, we all advance and then advance against each other as we grow. That's part of the evolutionary process. And what I mean by growth, by the way, in case you didn't understand where I was going with this, because most of my audience would know what this means, is growth meaning that you become more able to accept who you are, see the world through a clearer lens, and be less reactive and judgmental, be in the life that you love to live and share and inspire, and to really know how to support and serve another person, your partner. 
Those are some good starting points. There's a lot more to it than that. But growth, in a lot of sense, for me, is about having a great understanding of the way that life works, the way life is, to be a fully participating member in life, an expression of life. And also, if you're a spiritual person, to really raise your vibration spiritually, whether that means different teaching methods or different studies or maybe it's sound healing, whatever that is for you, that expands and grows you. you now, if you're single, you should be doing that now. Hint, hint. When you're in a relationship, you keep doing that. <laughs> it's like there's no, there's no deviation off the path when you get into a relationship. And if you really are clear about this, you'll choose a partner who's doing the same thing. <clears throat> now, one caveat on this. Actually, it's my second one, I think. I've already gave you... No, you have a quandary early. This is a caveat. Different. So one caveat is that when you're on a continual growth path, an evolutionary process with a partner, there's no guarantee that you will grow in the same direction at the same time over the same duration. I've seen relationships where the people are both growing and they grow apart and then come back together again later on. I've seen people grow, go to relationships where they grow apart and never come back together. So the, ch the, the challenge becomes, do you keep growing anyway or do you stop because your partner is going in a different direction? So, hi Michelle, nice to see you in my broadcast. So the choice point becomes perhaps even this, that at the beginning of your relationship, you declare to each other what your intentions are in that relationship. For your role in that relationship, your, your growth, your journey, and for your participation in that relationship. Because that way, you set some wheels in motion and an agreement is in place, which helps you have a more firm um, foundation, a base, from which to grow your relationship. But again, as I've said at the beginning of this, the relationship is a departure point, not a destination. So when you get into a relationship, this is a good time, a recommended time, and a time I invite you to look at, when just to say, okay, I'm happy now, I'm in love. Easy. And then 10 years down the road, you wonder what happened. I would invite you to look at relationships as a chance to start a new agreement with yourself and your partner about where you want to go in the next 3, 5, 10 years. Now, I don't say on the second date you do this. I'm talking about once you're in a relationship and you're exploring where you want to go and also exploring what you want to actually get out of life. For me, one of my high, one of my high values in my list of what I want and I'm intending is a partner that will be doing the work I do together with me and that we'll do certain things together in the world that will be really in team, in collaboration, in harmony, and in cooperation, which for some relationships that's an absolutely required as well, and for some relationships not important at all. At minimum, I recommend that your partner and you have honor and respect and appreciation for each other's visions and each other's goals. In fact, if you and your partner will be your, your partner's best cheerleader, even better. So my, my vision, what I'm intending for being in, in together in what we're doing, is not the one that everyone should have. But as long as you get support from your partner in what you're doing and you support your partner in what they're doing, then there's growth available and there's support available because relationships should also be about support for each other. Not as a crutch, but as an inspiration. I'll just see anything else. I've, I've exhausted all my content for this one. Is there more? There's more. So again, just to recap, one, one thing I want to put on the table is this, this trap people fall into. That relationship is when they land in a relationship, they're done, they're happy, they put their feet up and they coast. That's dying. That's not growing. And I know I'll quote T. Harv Eker, and actually I'll quote, I'm trying to remember, actually he got the quote from somebody else. He talks about hey, you're either growing or dying. Well, in relationships, same thing is true. It's like you can plant the relationship like you plant a plant in the ground and you can keep growing or you can cut it off put it in a vase and it'll die so your relationship choices are cut flowers or a growing plant I think you know where I'm going with this so in your choosing of relationships when you are dating when you're looking at relationship look to where this person's vision is going ah oh, that's what I was going to put in there dating <laughs> so back, backing up pre, pre relationship in this conversation as I give you the piece about in relationship if you're dating, I would highly recommend you have a real in quiz, in, um, inquiry and curiosity about your partner's vision of where they're going. Because to know where they are is wonderful. You know, say, great, nice person, they're really good, comfortable, they're doing what they really want. But where do they want to be in five years or ten years or the rest of their life? What do they want in relationship? What is it they value import, as important to them? And see if it matches your list. If you don't have a list, you better get started. So you know what it is you value and what you want in a relationship as well. That will support you in making better choices in dating, 
So you'll find partnerships that will work for you. I think you get it. This is my focus, of course. This is my work. So if you're stuck in this area, reach out to me. In fact, I offer a daily invitation to join me for a quick conversation, privately, not on, not on, on Facebook Live, of course. Um, but we can have a quick conversation about this. Um, it's called a discovery session. As in, we discover what's going on and help you get some clarity. And you can get that on my website if you go to barrysilver.com forward slash chat. This is my daily broadcast, number 371 in my daily series. Yes, over a year's worth. This broadcast, with all my other ones, will be on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, um, and also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, and also on my website, under, which is again barryselby.com, which is under the video blog, although that page is very crowded, so I wouldn't recommend going there. So homework. If you don't have a list of what you're looking for in the future for your relationship, my book, yes. What about my book? You want to you know how to get my book? Yes. My book's on my website too, which is either barryselby.com forward slash book, or you can go to 50, the number 50, 50waystolovyourlover.com. There, promoted it. I did mention this, this actually, this topic is in one of the chapters, not this way, but different. So, yes, you have to, uh, well, you can buy it on my site, you can buy it anywhere you want, but yeah, you can buy it on my site. On my site, you can get it with the ebook as well, if you want both, the ebook and the physical book. You can do that. So, yes, barryselby.com forward slash book. Um, yes, and this is number 371. There's lots to talk about in this area. So, um, oh, homework. That was where I was going. Homework. If you haven't started putting a list together of what you want in your future relationship, not just where it's going to be, but where it is you want it to go, this is the key. Or a key. Not the key, a key. <laughs> if you don't know what you're looking to do once you're in a relationship, you'll be stuck once you get there. So my invitation to you, my homework assignment to you, is to actually get clear about what you're looking for in a relationship and in the future of that relationship. It's an added bonus. For them, those of you who've been working on vision boards and other things like that, I have that in my program, by the way. If you want to find out more about that, message me. But to really get clear about where you want it to go down the road. Five years, ten years down the road, what's your intention, what's your vision for partnership of where you want it to go once you're in a relationship? Again, not the destination, but the departure point. Where do you want it to launch to? Consider your relationship a flight to the moon. It ain't just blasting off from the ground. It's about getting to the destination. So get clear about where you're going. And that's your homework. Okay, thanks for watching my broadcast. This is, I've given you all the download stuff. I know you can find me. I've given you all that stuff. No, yeah. Okay, I'm complete. Thanks for watching my broadcast. If you just came in and joined late, go back and watch from the beginning, please. It may be helpful. And I'll be back again tomorrow with number 372. So I wish you well. And if you've got questions, you know where to find me. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this replay, you have questions, comments, put them below, and I'll respond when I sign off. Um, and thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.